G'day. Max here, back at it again with another repair for you guys. I've got an iPhone 11. Just going to do a really quick video on something that I find really cool. And that's just injecting voltage into a power line in order to find a short. I'm working on this iPhone 11 here. I've already done most of the work where I've split the board. I removed two chips already, which one was a wireless charging chip and the other one was a big audio IC. So I actually split these boards open. I found both the chips are actually physically damaged. And if we have a look at the phone here, you can see that it was a pretty hard knock. Before I get into it, guys, make sure you do all that YouTube stuff. Smash the like button, share with your friends, subscribe. But with all that out of the way, let's just get into it. So just to show you guys what I was actually dealing with here, this is actually the wireless charging chip. It actually belongs around here on the bottom layer of the board. And if we flip the board over, physically see that indent in the board there, which lines perfectly up with that one. So what's happened is something's impacted here with the board sitting just inside that housing has then impacted here. So what I've already done here is remove that wireless charging chip wireless chip removed here I can't find any other errors so we're done with this bottom board for now moving on to the top layer here this is where the big audio IC lives which is originally this guy here and you can see that crack just on the corner there after yeeting both those chips away measured some of these pads around here to check the circuit and after doing so realize there's a short so if we jump over to our circuit diagram here we can see this is our big audio IC the line that I actually found to be shorted is this line just here which at the bottom here, we can see it's PP V to D boost. V to D boost is a 3.8 volt line. Now seeing we've got a short on our V to D boost line, because I found a short on that V to D boost line, it could be literally any one of these red points along here. Because there was a bit of physical damage here on the big audio IC, what I've actually done is just taken a stab, which you really shouldn't do, but it's not gonna hurt. I removed this guy here. And after removing that chip, I still had a short. Now, even though we've still got a short, this is where actually the fun part comes in. I'll show you guys a really cool trick we can use. When we look at the board, we've got to remember where that VDD boost line is. As we're trying to diagnose this, what we're actually doing is keeping our eye on the VDD boost line, because that's the one that we know that's short. Before I get too far ahead of myself, I just want to show you guys how I actually confirm that there's a short on a line. So just like any technician knows, what we can do is actually chuck our multimeter into diode mode, put the red probe on ground, and then we can put the black probe on the line that we're testing now this cap here and this cap here is on vdd boost with that red probe on ground and our black probe on the vdd boost line we can take note of our diode reading and right now it's reading as full short so that's just zeros across the board the second way that i use a multimeter to check if i've got a short to ground is by is by chucking it over to continuity mode and what we do then is chuck one probe on ground doesn't matter where we put it and then just test the line either side on V to D boost. This cap should only have continuity on one side, so we should only hear a beep on one side and not the other. But we hear it on both sides, so that's telling us that there's a short. We can repeat this on any of the caps that are connected to V to D boost or any of the lines that are connected to V to D boost and we'll get the same result. So we've confirmed with the diode mode reading that we've got a short on VDD boost. We've also done it another way by using continuity mode on our multimeter. With that confirmed, what we can actually do is now find where the short is. Now, even though we had damage to the big audio IC here, I just took a guess with this chip and removed it. It's stupid of me just playing chip of fortune, seeing if I got lucky. No results, still there's a short. What I'm about to show you guys next is something that you should only try if you're confident that you know what you're doing. Because if you get it wrong, you can cause catastrophic failure and essentially stuff the whole job. And what we don't want to do as DIY repairers or otherwise professionals is make it worse than what it was. So I know that VDD boost is a 3.8 volt line on this particular model. Even though I know that, I'm not going to just sit there and blast 3.8 volts through it. It's not how I operate. I always do it a little bit lower. So I'm going to set my DC power supply life support to 3 volt at 2 amp. What I actually do next, guys, is I take my alligator clips with the negative alligator clip i put it on one set of tweezers and the other end goes on the positive we all know that a short circuit generates a lot of heat and this is by far my favorite way to find a short on a circuit board so i take some standard electronic freeze spray which i just pick up from the local auto pro it's non-conductive non-corrosive it's not going to cause any drama you can use a bit of alcohol to clean it up once you're done and i just give it a spray make it a blizzard Now next, I chuck one tweezer on ground and the other one I touch part of the circuit. So let's go here. There we go. So what we actually saw there is that cap jumped out first. That's the guy that got hot. That's our short circuit. Now that we know that this guy's our problem, all we've got to do is a victim. With a bit of encouragement from a hot air gun, Continue to pull up while we heater him up. Oh. 
It's like pulling a tooth. There we go. I have no idea where he blew away to, so that guy just yeeted himself away. Now that we've given it a minute for the board to cool down, we can now use continuity mode and check if the short's gone. One beat. No beat. Let's just check our pads here. No beat. And a beat. So we're only getting a beat on ground. And nothing on the positive end. So we're only getting a beep on ground there. I'll just confirm the diode reading. And the diode reading for our VDD boost line is 0.377. That's a healthy measurement. We're good to go. Up next, let's just chuck a bit of flux down back where our big audio IC goes. Grab the new audio IC and chuck it into place. Just going to nuke it with a bit of hot air. And next we'll chuck down this chip that I played Chip of Fortune with. Nice and easy. And finally we'll chuck this capacitor back that I removed before to make it easier to take off the big audio IC. Come on buddy. There we go. Come on, there we go. Again, we let her cool down. We can now clean up the crime scene, just with a bit of alcohol and a clean room wipe. Looking pretty schmick. We'll connect the logic board back to our power supply, flick her on. And we're drawing no current, so the short's been fixed. All that's left for me is to put these two layers back together, test everything's working, may or may not, might need more work. So all I really wanted to show you there is how I found out there was a short, how I got to finding where the short was, solving the short, and getting to this part of the repair where we can now move on from the short. I hope you guys like this video. Do all that YouTube stuff, give it a like, give us a subscribe, share with your friends. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one. All day's work, mate.